the stand already. All right, so we're going to, if you want to look it up, it is John fourteen twenty seven, and we're going to talk about God's peace today. No one's really going to look it up. All right. The first scripture I'll start with is, Peace I leave with you, my own peace, I now give and bequeath, bequeath, sure, to you, not as the world gives, do I give it to you. Do not let your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Stop allowing yourselves to be agitated and disturbed. Do not permit yourselves to be fearful and intimidated and cowardly and unsettled. Wow. See that? Someone just walks right up through the front of everybody. <laughs> so this scripture comes from uh, the time right before Jesus gets betrayed in the garden and, and sent to be crucified. And he knew all of this was going to happen. I don't like being able to see my own audio. That's weird. Um, and Jesus knew how painful this was going to be. He ended up stressed. Stressed to the point that he ended up asking his father, God, to to pass this cup away from him, to not to not do this. But then he said, "Let your will be done," and peace washed over him. But before this, this is when they're uh, he's just talking to him that he says Jesus knew all this death and painful and and how bad it was going to be, and he was still at peace at this time. Now, peace is a very powerful thing and when you really think about it because peace is not the absence of stressful times and stressful things. Those are always going to be a part of your life. Always and forever, those stressful times are going to be there. Peace is being able to be calm in those times and not worrying about those stressful times just to be able to breeze through them. Okay, the next scripture, if anybody wants to look it up, and if you want the scriptures or anything afterwards, just let me know is Mark chapter 4. We're going to read verse 35 through 41. This is also where the TV is going to be awesome because I could just put them up there. On the same day when evening had come, he said to them, let us cross over to the other side. Now when they had left the multitude, they took him along in the boat as he was, and other little boats were also with him. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat so that it was already filling. But he was in the stern, asleep on a pillow. And they awoke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Then he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. But he said to them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, Who can this be that even in the wind and the, that, that, that even the wind and the sea obey him? So, I, I believe that Jesus knew about the storm that was coming. I just, it's just something that Jesus does. He's just good at that type of stuff. He knew that the storms were coming and the winds and that the, these waves were going to be rough. Probably why I wanted to go to the other side. That's exactly right. I think he wanted to test to see what his disciples would do. And just to see. I truly believe that. What? Oh. You completely sidetracked me. I forgot where I was at now. Yes, God. They wanted to. He wanted to see how much they truly trusted and believed in him, and and God, and and they got worried. They were stressed. They were worried that they were going to sink. You know, it, the storm was coming against them. The storm of a new school year. The storm of of what's out there. The storm of adulthood. They all show up quickly and they are raging storms it's it's a rough world out there but then all they had to do was ask all you have to do is ask and believe and the peace came about them and about the wind and the storms but it doesn't say that the storm necessarily went completely away the storm clouds were still there but the wind and the waves calmed down. The part that was the most brutal were still there. You may still have to go through these storms. But with Jesus there, it's you, everything can be at peace even though you're in the storm. 
So, as a matter of fact, Jesus was so at peace, he was asleep. This storm was getting ready to sink the boat, and he was asleep. Savage. Yeah. <laughs> So, why don't you guys uh, close your eyes for a second, and I want you to kind of imagine this. You're on a boat, just you. You're alone. That boat is your life. Now, you're headed towards storms. You're standing there. It's your boat. You're in control of it. And all you see are these storms in front of you. All these problems... What, what's going to happen next? What's the next step going to look like? What, what, you know, I'm in the process of trying to rent or buy a house. Like, what, what, that's the next storm, you know? It's, you know, even simple as tomorrow. What is Monday going to look like? I, I, it's adulthood and your school and friends and, and if you really look at it all, it's all stressful, <laughs> And there's all these storms just in front of you. And your goal's at the end. And there's no way you're going to make it through these storms. Now, you have Jesus on your side. He's in your corner. He's on your boat. He's in your life. And he speaks and rebukes the storms and the wind and the waves. And they all calm down. Now you can see the end. It's still stormy. It's still nasty looking. But now you know you can make it to the end. Now there's a clear shot. Okay, you can open your eyes now. Like I said, those storm clouds will still be there. Yeah. They're still going through the storm. You're right, though. But it doesn't, all the wind and waves, all the worst parts of this storm will cease to be the scary parts. You may still be going through the storm, but with Jesus on your side, there's peace. It's calm. You can tackle any and every storm that comes your way. Well, the first scripture we read was John 14, 27, and it says, and with this scripture, the kicker part is the back half of the scripture. This is the part that's really important. The whole scripture says, Peace I leave with you. Jesus leaves his peace here. My own peace I now give and bequeath to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Do not let your heart be troubled, nay, neither let it be afraid. English is still really hard. Stop allowing yourselves to be agitated and disturbed and do not permit yourselves to be fearful and intimidated and cowardly and unsettled. Jesus leaves this peace here for us. But, and you just have to ask for it. But once you have it, it's very easy to lose it. You have to be on guard and ready. The storms will show up at any and every point that they can. There will always be an attack. You, so you have to constantly be on guard, constantly praying and worshiping and, and reading scripture and being ready for these storms. You have, to, you have to constantly be seeking Him and going beyond. Mm -hmm. That's right. <laughs> There's more than you want to know about that tie into the beyond. There's a lot that ties into beyond in every aspect of your life. <laughs> in the scripture, Hebrews 12, verse 14, it says, Make every effort to live in peace with everyone and to be holy. Without holiness, no one will see the Lord. And to me, the scripture is 
that without living in holiness, striving for, striving to go beyond, there's no, you not only will I not reach you guys, if we're looking at me, I would not reach you guys. I would not be able to get anything to you, but I won't be at peace. So through peace, through all the storms, being at peace through these storms will be a way to show God to the rest of the world, to your friends. And the only way to do that is to be holy and to live in holiness, which is not an easy thing to do. It's very easy to slip. So you have to constantly be on guard, constantly fighting for your peace, which doesn't make a lot of sense because you have to fight for your peace. But it also makes sense. So how many of you have truly have God in your life? Like you should. To constantly be at peace and not stress about the future. I'm not there yet. I know as a matter of fact, I'm nowhere near that yet. It's something that I feel like teaching the youth is great for me because I can continue to go beyond with you guys and, and teach you and hopefully make myself better. <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> Now let's take a step back and let's, let me ask this one last question. Can you pull up that song real quick? Uh, and let me ask this question real quick. How many of you don't even have God in your life now? Who don't have any peace? And how many of you would like to learn about the peace he has?